Hey, it's Doug with Backcountry Pilgrim. I want to talk to you today about some hiking shoes that I have been wearing lately that I'm super excited about. Like many in the hiking community, I made the switch from big, heavy hiking boots to trail runners some time ago. I made the switch initially into the Ultra brand. Starting with the Lone Peaks, I tried out the Temps. I've had a few different pairs of the Lone Peaks, and I like them for a number of reasons. However, because of some of the things I didn't like quite so much, I've recently been wearing Topo shoes. These are the Ultra Ventures. This is the second model that I have tried from them, and really this has become pretty much my primary hiking shoe. Until that is, Topo released a new shoe with some features that I had been hoping they would put together into one package for quite some time. These trail runners are the Topo Pursuits, and they may just be the Ultra Killers. So far, in basically every metric that I looked at, these have been superior to my experience in the Ultras. And these seem to be trying to combine some of the very best features that I have appreciated with the Topos, but they are now in a zero drop. Now, doing a hiking shoe review is kind of difficult because everybody's bodies are different, our feet are different, and something that might fit me absolutely perfect with my slightly wide feet, not very splayable toes and high arch, may not work at all for someone who is flat-footed or has very splayable toes or very narrow feet. So I'm not going to be talking about the comfort and the fit and those kinds of things because that's always personal and there's no way you're going to know if they're going to work for you without trying them on. However, there are some objective comparisons I can make between these two models and that's what I'm going to do for you now. When I first made the switch to trail runners, I began where many people did with the Ultra Lone Peaks. I did briefly try out the Temps because I wanted something with a bit more cushion, but the gription on the sole of the Temps was so bad that I ended up returning them. The grip on the Lone Peaks was better, but not the best I'd ever had. There were some things about them that I had to admit I didn't really prefer, and one of them was the wide toe box. Now, I know that was the whole point of getting Ultras, right? The wide toe box, along with the zero drop platform, is what Ultra is known for. The thing is that while I did not want my toes to be smashed into my shoes like they sometimes were in boots, I found the Ultras to be a bit too wide. You see, my toes just don't splay out naturally, and so a lot of that width of the shoe ended up being wasted on me. Now, while that didn't really matter a whole lot when it came to comfort, when I got on more technical or rocky terrain, the wide toe box tended to smush and wrap up around the side of my foot, kind of feeling like it was pulling it off of the other side of my foot. And I felt like I just had these boat oars on my feet. Then I discovered the Topo brand, which claimed to have a roomy toe box, but they weren't as wide as the Ultras. I first tried their Mountain Racers, which I liked very much. However, as I did more research, I decided I wanted to try something with a bit more cushion, and I picked up their Ultra Ventures. These have basically been on my feet ever since, and I have become a huge fan of Topo because of them. The slightly narrower but still roomy toe box was quite comfortable on my feet, but it didn't have that rolling, twisting feeling when I stepped on something that wasn't level. Further, because Topo uses Vibram grip soles, I was much more confident on slippery or steep rock because the Vibram grip is legendary. I could pretty much go anywhere in these shoes with full confidence that I was not going to slip and slide. I did wonder what it would be like if Topo made a trail runner with the same kinds of features but in a zero drop like my Ultras. Well, enter the Topo Pursuits a zero-drop, moderately cushioned shoe. So how do the Topo Pursuits stack up against the Ultra brand? First of all, the Topo Pursuits come in at a lower price. At the time of this video, a new Ultra Lone Peak pair ran $150, whereas the Temps came in at $160. The Topo Pursuits are $140. So right off the bat, it's a win for Topo. Now, the stack height on the Pursuits is 28 millimeter, which puts them three above the Lone Peaks and two below the Temps. 
I actually find this to be a really good compromise. I never really felt like the lone peaks were quite enough, especially on really uneven terrain. And I liked the temps, but I wouldn't have minded having a little less cushion so that I would get a bit more trail feel. The lone peaks, because they have such a small stack height, also included a rock plate, but they don't include it in the temps because the cushion does the job for them. The same thing is true of the Topo Pursuit. I found the toe box of the Topos to be plenty roomy. My toes never touch the sides of the shoe, but importantly, when I am hiking, the pursuits feel more precise. When I step on the side of a rock and the shoe starts to bend, my foot goes with it. It is a lot more natural feeling rather than the ultras. The Vibram soles the Topo uses are, I think, a clear win over Ultra's Max Trap. Vibram just makes you feel like Spider-Man on rocks, and in California, where I spend a lot of time on wet or steep rock, that is extremely welcome. Further, although Ultra has made good improvements over the years, they are still not really known for being a super rugged shoe. Topo seems to be more focused on the trail aspect, where Ultra has continued to focus more on running, and I think that shows in the construction and the durability of the shoe. Now, you might think that there's a weight penalty for that, but once again, Topo wins, not by a lot. These are all basically 11 ounce shoes. However, the Ultra Lone Peak comes in at a solid 11 ounces, the Temps come in at a tenth of an ounce less, and the Topo Pursuits come in at another tenth of an ounce less. So, while none of this is really going to affect performance or feel, Objectively, the Topos win again. Now, all of these shoes are zero drop. That means that from your heel to the front of your foot, the shoe is not providing any lift. It's unusual for shoes today to not lift your heels up unnaturally, and so it can kind of feel like you're rocking back a little bit when you first start wearing zero drop shoes. And although I do sometimes appreciate that extra cushion in the heel, I have kind of bought into the zero drop mentality, and I'm glad to have that choice. The standard Lone Peaks, Temps, and Pursuit shoes are all a mesh upper, which means they are not going to keep water out, but they breathe very well and they dry quickly. Further, all three shoes are Gator compatible. Now, like I said in the introduction, I typically do not like recommending one pair of shoes over another to other people because to whatever degree your foot is different from mine, the shoes I like may not be comfortable for you. However, when it comes to the objective features, and stats on the Topo Pursuits, I think they are the clear winner over the Ultra Lone Peaks and the Ultra Timps. All right, I hope this review of the Topo Pursuits has helped you out. Check out some of my other reviews if you are interested in quality hiking footwear. And until next time, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim. Thanks for watching.